Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was the 3rd of September. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I think it's, uh, it's a kind of belated birthday, but uh, we can still say happy birthday tonight. <laughs> happy birthday, Thank Dr. Mayer. Okay. Uh, happy birthday, Dr. Mayer. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Well, the good thing is I was, I was born on the September 1st. Uh, first, okay. So you also a spring baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so we have a lot of Sendera people in the house tonight. Okay, yeah. so happy birthday. Uh, we are, I, I'm, I'm not so good at singing. I would have sing happy birthday to you. But I, I think if you can manage my voice, I will say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Dr. Maya. This is... From all of us, from Art Educators and Girls, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I must tell you, it was such a wonderful day because I went to a film festival in Rustenburg, here in uh, northwest province of South Africa. And there was a red moon rising over the dark sky. I don't know if anybody has seen if, the, uh, if it will be red on that side as well. But uh, yeah, it was a very good uh, festival. Film festival, uh, and and there's a lot starting to happen in this area as well in terms of people taking initiative and the youth taking initiative to start things and so on. So I will report on that a little bit later, or just uh, give you some of my impressions and contacts and so on. If people are interested in the film and media, you know, multimedia industry. That that would be great. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. So, um, I, you can you can see more on that as you start your presentation tonight. So, I want to start sh sharing your your slide. Uh, sorry, we can only have it on uh, PDF tonight, and I think it's it's okay. If you can see this slide, let me know. I've started sharing your slide now. Can you see okay. it from the, from that end? Can you okay. see? It? All right, yes, I can see it, and uh, I'm going to start straight away. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. let me just introduce you. Uh, this okay. is Dr. Maya, Maya, Maya from South Africa, from Northwest University, South Africa, and she will be presenting to us tonight on the topic, the love paradigm for art educators. So I think this, uh, it is a great honor to have you tonight. So thank you, and you can take the floor now, Dr. Maya. Thank you. Right. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, just share uh, something that came out of my studies um, that, uh, you know, became quite relevant in my art teaching as well. And I hope to share with you something that um, occurred in the last five years with me uh, while I was still busy with my master's. And then there were incidents that happened and that caused a bit of a cognitive dissonance, as Festinger said. And it caused me to change the way that I teach and the way that I actually uh, approach art education completely. And it's really my privilege to share it with you tonight. And um, I hope that it will actually also give you some sort of insight into how you can actually branch out in art education and how you can make it a, a very strong discipline in your area. But um, yeah, so basically it's the art of becoming poor. And that part stands for participatory artist, researcher and teacher. And I'm going to show you basically how the love paradigm um, fits in with the part section. Okay, so an overview of my presentation will then consist firstly of an introduction to a story, because I believe that um, anything should have, uh, <laughs> I think there's Christiana as well, uh, that anything should start off with a story, uh, a good story, and then I'm going to carry on to tell you something about the value of art educators, and specifically <laughs> the artist, research and teacher. Then I'm going to about the love paradigm and, and show you how it works uh, and how we can live 
in that love paradigm. And uh, then I would kindly invite you to also, um, you know, uh, to also buy in into this paradigm and to um, actually see if it can apply to your own uh, teaching. And we'll end off with some final thoughts. And hopefully we will have time that said I can speak briefly about the Sasil conference that's going to be run in December, the beginning of December. Now, there to your right, you will see basically the model that um, embeds the love paradigm. Um, and it is, uh, it stands for art and the P for part. So, yes, this is how my story started. It looks like a happy picture. And I like to quote the words of uh, Paulo Freire, who is a very uh, critical theorist from South America. And in Africa, we've got a lot of similarities with South America in terms of um, oppressor, oppression and you know, liberation and also a few other, uh, uh, you know, uh, activist type of theories that we would like to, to underline in our work. But it says the loving people, it's very dialectical. I don't know many things, but it's necessary to believe in the people. It is necessary to love with the people because if we do not do that, we cannot learn from the people. And in not learning from the people, we cannot teach them. Uh, and basically, I thought, yeah, I went with an outreach program with my students, though they were Foundation Five students, to an outreach, and we had to paint a hundred square meter wall with lots of pictures for kids that want to actually uh, um, in the playgrounds. It wasn't a township area, and it was um, basically uh, it, it was a story about the. Uh, having to um, paint the walls and, and uh, enlighten the, uh, the playgrounds of the kindergarten oh, yeah, okay. now, The story, I think uh, Prince, somebody's mic is on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the story is about, that relies on a, a shark and a monkey. And the shark and the monkey, the shark wanted the heart of the monkey to take it to his king who was ill. And he actually wanted, and there is the whole story, he actually wanted this heart of the monkey. So he lured him to go with him. And uh, it's a Swahili tale, it's actually from Kenya. And uh, to, you know, to actually present his heart to the king. But the, the monkey learned about this, and he actually then uh, tricked the shark to take him back to terra firma, to, to do uh, dry land. And then once he was there, he actually um, jumped off and he ran away. And they were both disgruntled and very angry about the relationship or the, trick, the tricky part that they tricked him into going with him and not telling him the full story. And that's how I feel sometimes if we do outreach or if we go and we work with communities around us, that we are sometimes um, actually uh, not sharing our goals, our, our motives, our views with the people around us. In other words, we are going there in with our own agenda and we do not know what are the needs of the people. For that matter, it can be the kids. What do they want? What do people around us want? And how do we change our linear type of approach when we talk to people about art. Now, what happened here was that we did this community engaged project. You can see it's 100 square meters. And they were, uh, we painted monkeys and giraffes and everything. And once we were finished, the kids uh, peered around the wall, okay? And they saw the monkeys and they basically ran away. And, you know, I could tick all the boxes. And we could say, yes, we finished this very nicely. But I was, like I said, having a bit of a cognitive dissonance, a feeling uneasy, because the kids were running away from the playground that they were actually supposed to be in and play in. So they were scared of the monkeys. I didn't take their wishes and their wants into consideration. 
So what I did was uh, we just go went with our own thoughts. This is what they want. This is how it must look like. And we didn't consult what the kids wanted, what would make them happy, how would they actually re relate to it, and how would they actually like to play, how would they like their playground to uh, be observed or um, embedded in their careers, or, uh, not in care their careers, in their playground. So, uh, I ask, uh, yes. <laughs> Can I carry on? Okay. I just hear a little bit of uh, noise feedback. Anyway, so I asked my students, you know, what is the status of education in art? So we need to look at that again. And how can we approach art teaching different in our classes and also in relation to the communities? So I'll be going to carry on teaching art as a very specialized subject that's reserved only for the talented few. Or are we going to actually teach art in a way that everybody can, uh, more inclusive, that everybody can approach and that everybody can understand? So we know that the role of the art teacher and the perceptions in schools are quite varied. Uh, specifically, they do not see themselves as um, talented, a lot of the teachers, and therefore they don't think they've got the skills to teach learners. They also um, become that we also know that learners become easily bored if we don't uh, teach them with with you know because they are the kids are exposed to a lot of entertainment. So if we don't make it interesting in the classes, then they will of course also um, find it quite boring. We also know that um, uh, uh, the teachers think that they don't have enough skills. They also think that they um, you know, need to do fulfill quite a lot of organizational roles and they are not properly pre prepared. And those are some of the comments that I got from my students as well. So I had to go and I have had to say, okay, how can I teach with more love? How can I teach with uh, that is more embracing and that will actually make it easier for teachers to to go into the field and to be uh, professional art teachers. So if we can go to the next slide, uh, friends. <laughs> are you still busy there? Uh, yeah, we see that there are certain expectations of a well-trained teacher. Uh, and, and these are also um, some of the um, attributes that they should have. Um, for instance, they, we need to create expanded opportunities for those learners who struggle. We also need to facilitate active ways of learning. We also have to make sure that we can actually expand our practices also out of a classroom situation. So I had to ask my students, how can we uplift the um, status of art education? And I realized that we need to position them. They need to feel very strongly positioned um, to become leaders in the creative fields to actually make a difference in the lives of the uh, children. Um, and if we go to the next slide, I will explain what um, I did. Um, you see, because teachers do have a lot, and especially art teachers, and I mean all the other teachers as well, but art teachers need to diversify so much and play around with their talents so much, you know. They have to, that is one of the um, mono, uh, monograms that I made at some point uh, about a general having to juggle with lots of balls. And, um, and then I came across a guy by the name of, um, of Thornton. And with this slide, you must just stick a little bit longer. And Thornton, came up with three uh, roles. That is the artist, researcher, and teacher roles. Those were actually discovered a little bit before by Rita Irvin and Springay, and they talked about the art theory. So with the art theory, it means that if I say to my um, students, if they can basically take all the seven roles that are acquired of them in teaching, and they can just really stick to these three roles and, and develop it very well, then all the other roles will be amalgamated into those three roles. 
and that is the artist, researcher, and teacher. And with the artist, it means that you need to have a lot of content knowledge. With the researcher, you need to be self-directed, self-efficient. You need to be, and the value that you should have is to be connected with what is happening around you, uh, connected in terms of practices that you need to um, uh, uh, investigate and inquire about, and all the time trying to improve on your own practices. And then as a teacher, uh, it is important that you lose a little bit of your self-isolation and that you become more sociable and caring to be able to transfer knowledge. Okay, so this is the way the love paradigm starts because if you just go back and you say, I'm just living, uh, sorry, uh, Prince, the, the previous one, okay, uh, I will talk about the previous slide. Um, if you just say live, yeah, then it is loving my life, I, uh, and my inner qualities and value the environment. But if you change the live uh, paradigm to a love paradigm, it means that you are loving what you are doing still, but you'll also include others and their inner strengths. And you also value your um, immediate, your environment and your learning environment specifically. So just by remembering becoming art, becoming part in a loving paradigm or in a love paradigm will actually help people building to think wider than the, than just teaching in uh, classrooms and just, uh, you know, carrying on on old paths. So it is actually necessary for us to discover new pathways and to teach in different ways where we become more interconnected and where we start to share and to accommodate others. Uh, some people may be more knowledgeable working with experts some may, may be less knowledgeable, little kids, and therefore we need to use different uh, levels of art when we are working with different strands of people. Okay, so now we can go on to the next one. <laughs> uh, the next slide then, uh, Prince. Uh, and this is basically just an example of what my students then uh, Drew as an artist, they might uh, zinc tangles uh, and uh, dwindling with pins and so on. Um, I think it's frozen. Can you hear me? Yes, I think we lost we lost connection from her. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry about that, everyone. Um, just. Sorry, everyone. Sorry about the break in uh, transmission, like you say. Um, I guess you see we're connecting. And just, let's just give her uh, uh, some few minutes. She will join us back. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you so much. While she's rejoining, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. It's good to see you all. I think while we are waiting for her to join us, uh, I just want to quickly share something with us so that we can fill the, uh, the uh, space. 
I want to share my screen now. I want to share my screen. There is something I want to show us. So I'm sharing my screen now. Was it about a few minutes? Okay. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. This okay. I believe we can all see my screen now. Sir, can you see my screen? Yes, it's blank. It's blank. Okay, it's coming. Yeah, okay. I can see it now. I can okay. see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's better now. Okay. Um, there is a uh, another space that we have that we all can connect to anytime. It's called the Wakelet. This we have a space on Wakelet where it is actually a collaborating space for all of us. Okay, uh, Maya is joining us now, so I will quickly just talk about this. It's just actually a an, uh, a space for us to collaborate. We can all connect to this space and also share a lot of <clears throat> information uh, with other art educators. Right now, there is another opportunity that I would like to share with us tonight while we are waiting for Maya to actually uh, resume back with us. Um, I'm going to click on this. Uh, so when we log in on this particular wakelet space, we, sh we should go to that particular space that I, I click on now. It's loading and it's about invite from INSEA. INSEA is an International Society of Education to Art. So they are calling for learning to art international. So in all the information we needed to participate is there. The uh, deadline now has been extended to Yo, October. I'm... So, okay, you are back. Just one minute, Maya. So the deadline has been extended yes. to October 12th, and you can all see all this information there. How to be part of this uh, uh, project is there, so we can explore it. I will talk more on that. So uh, Maya can take over now. You are welcome back, Maya. Yo, I'm trying to um, can't connect. Oh, because we have that name. May are you back? Um, okay. Okay. I'm not yet. Right the second, I'm going to connect you. Are you back? Do you want to continue now? Maya? Yes, hi. Hello, hello. Yes, um, I'm actually now... Um, uh, put me on hold. Hello? Hello, uh, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. All right, I'm, I'm actually now on my phone, on my cell phone. So uh, there seems to be a bad connection with my network. Um, okay, okay, so if you can just... Um, Tell me, um, I'm going to this slide now. I'm I'm putting it, so I'm working offline. I'm sorry about that, uh, people, because I really thought that uh, the connection is sorted. Okay, so if we can go on and we can just carry on to the prompt, what links an artist, researcher, and teacher together. Um, so the pertinent questions then, um, I don't know if we are there, uh, would be... Um, uh, how does, what is one's own artistic identity, the researcher, uh, the teacher, and how do they complement each other? And then also becoming part, how can you as an art teacher become more inclusive and socially and socially uh, engaged? Dorsai. <laughs> okay, right, I'm back. Okay, I'm, I'm back, Darsa. Right, uh, good. So if we can go on to the next one, I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, to the next slide. Yes, and with this prompt, I'm just asking what links the artist, researcher, and teacher together, and uh, and what, how can we become part? And that part then stands for participatory artist, researcher, and teacher. Now, it seems quite theoretical, but once we start to embed this in our practices, we start to really identify with the different roles that we need to play. 
uh, in our classes and also out of our classes and the way that we can engage with the creative fields. That is what I'm asking. How can we in, engage internationally, locally, globally um, in the um, creative fields? Okay, we can carry on to the next one. Right, and that is then uh, living with love, becoming part. So it means that we've got um, the artist, researcher, teacher roles. We've got all the values. We add the P to it, and it all happened in cycles. And that is basically what the paradigm is about. To get to the love paradigm, you need to actually firstly identify with yourself and your own roles. You also need to. Um, um, have your values and everything sorted and then through a technique of participatory engagement and action research you get to a point where people work together instead of in silos and serving each other okay that's those are the four phases that are followed to get to this specific paradigm uh, could we go on to the next one please yes and that is the process that i actually suggested that in the first place, if my students are going to communities and if they are working with people outside of the classroom, first and foremost, we cannot, as in the uh, monkey, the, the painting of the um, kindergarten, go in one sided and sort of enforce our vision and our will on other people. We need to understand what the community, what children's needs are. And first build up a relationship, a, a relationship of trust, trusting relationship, one that relies basically on people buying in and people actually also coming to the party and, and, and kids and everybody seeing that it's going to be a, a, a space where they can work together. Okay, so I think it's important to first establish a relationship, a good relationship with everybody. And that is, in my case, the students and the community, um, children or other stakeholders. Then, very important is to go into a cycle where you look and you think about things, you reflect about it, you act and you reflect about it. So those are the cycles that is actually part of an action research methodology. And you apply that in, your, um, in all the cycles. So when you get to cycle two, which is the planning cycle, then you need to um, plan together. What is the vision? Where do we want to go with this? What do we see together must happen in this area, in the school, in uh, projects that we um, take forward together? So that is very important that with your planning, there must be vision building. And then, of course, in art, we are not unfamiliar with it. Once we've got the ideas formation, once we've got the planning, then we apply our skills. We take everybody's assets, whether it's uh, painting, it's making, it is designing. Application of skills must be there, okay? And then lastly, is the reflection on everything and also the exhibition. So with that model, my students then went into a new project where they had to beautify a park. And that park was in a municipal area. It was dilapidated. It was not friendly, user friendly for kids. And you can see they started then to do the planning together. It wasn't just going into an area and painting pretty pictures that you find on a curtain and that you copy on walls. It was actually sitting together and planning and having a vision, visualizing how this area must look like making little marquees and little models to decide, okay, we are both parties are, are buying in and we are going to work both on a vision uh, where we're going to express ourselves. And it must, of course, accommodate the needs of all the participants, all the people participating in the project together. Okay, the next one, Prince. Right, we can carry on. And there uh, we see that um, we need to love others and value their environment. So here we find that um, 
again, by the end of the project, people were working together. And there was a time when we had to celebrate, uh, you know, about, you know, what was happening around us. We had to really enjoy what was happening um, in this area. People had to understand where it comes from. It wasn't just a campus uh, a community type of engagement. It was something that everybody bought into and that everybody could um, enjoy. So that was at the end of it. Then we had to go back and we had to actually um, start our own communities of practice. So with the next project here, we find that we invited the community then to come and work on campus to experience what was happening there. And this was a totally transdisciplinary level, very othering, you know, other in terms of love others, love people around us. Uh, we had the, the academics, we had people from different disciplines, technology and art and environment. We had uh, the Saboni women's group. We had uh, people from a children's house nearby, nearby house. So they all came in and they all brought their specific skills to the table. And we also had an expert, a mentor from the outside to actually come and to work on this. So, um, so yes, this is then what we've made uh, on the campus. We had to sort of revamp an old symbol and change it into something new and embed all sorts of decorations and uh, uh, stuff like that in it. Yeah. Right, so that was the end product of another transdisciplinary uh, engagement that we had with the community. So it's making and upcycling with materials that we've got at hand. Also quite a difficult, intricate, very, um, they call it a bricolage process where there's lots of multidisciplinary things involved and so on. But very important, again, all those cycles had to be followed. You need to build up a relationship first. Then you need to sit down and plan together and have a vision of where you want to go. Then you need to apply and use assets and the skills of people. And uh, eventually you have to uh, celebrate this. So this elephant was also unveiled by the uh, rector of the campus with all the other community members um, invited to you know, to, to the display and to the performance and celebration. Right, so we can move on to the next one. Thank you. And, and that then is um, the model that we followed. So exactly like the previous one, I added the orientation to first brief everybody about what it is. So that was the one in purple. And then you can see the one in orange is where we celebrate and we actually um, celebrate everything that got together, that we, you know, the achievements. And then lastly, we're moving towards the leadership. And now from here on, we have to actually start, I have to ask my students, okay, sometimes the lecturer cannot find you a community or we do not know what the needs of the communities are. So can you go out and maybe find your own community? And can you actually see what, uh, find out what are the needs of the people that um, want to uh, work on a project together with you? And I was surprised to see with what that came up. And I think it is in the next slide. You can go there. You can always ask me for this model. I can make it available to you send it through, also put it on our website or our, our, the link on the website and so on. So it is available in a living theory um, organization, you know, also an action research group, and then also in CRs, also aware of this and so on. Okay, um, friends, the next one. If you can scroll down. <clears throat> okay, and here's basically what they start to do that's also celebrating uh, achievements like the kindness tree. This other one is like an environmental project that one of the students started at the schools. And when she left, 
this is the big thing. Um, you know, how can things stay sustainable if the people move out of a project? So the people living in communities, the school or the kids that's staying behind, they must be able to buy into it so that they can carry on with projects where they make vertical gardens or where they have exhibitions, kindness trees, or where they basically celebrate their own achievements. So it's very important that we also pay attention to the fact that things need to be sustainable and things need to carry on once the protagonist or the person that moves in uh, goes out, you know, and, and, and is not around any longer. So otherwise, it will all remain ad hoc projects as such. Okay, so we can, you can see there, it was a gallery walk where everybody explained what they were doing uh, during a gallery walk exhibition. Thank you. Next one. Right, and, and that's just an example of the different posters that the students produced um, in terms of issues that are quite close to them. Um, we have here posters about children's rights. We have uh, uh, posters about the environment. Uh, you will recognize MOOC's uh, screen to go green, the whale situation. Um, uh, and then, of course, also issues about leadership, you know, how, how the youth see leadership and how leaders should be in the creative fields. So they start to investigate this and um, also start to interview people that are in some sort of social, have some sort of social issue. So they start to make these projects their own and produce uh, posters that were actually, um, you know, that apply to the own social engagement with areas outside of the art class. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we work with changing lift, uh, living to loving in art education. So again, love what you do, um, appreciate others and their inner strengths value your own environment and learning environment specifically um, as a place of living and wellness. So you can see that I'm not just living in my own world, but I'm also extending my living and my purpose to a wider community, a community outside of my own uh, reality and my own area. And that's where I actually want to situate myself. Um, and, and that is uh, almost the end of my story, uh, if we can go to the next one. And funny enough, that kid painted that on, on, on a wheel. Uh, what are the ways forward then? Um, you see, once you have uh, established a type of a love paradigm, then you have basically accomplished most of the things that you see at the bottom of that model. and. On the left hand side, you will find that in that model, um, there would be lots of elements that contribute to, um, to compassion. And compassion is something that is all about emotional things. It's about caring. It is about the um, uh, areas that, that we see the, at the bottom. Those four areas need to be covered because if we don't have compassion, then um, we, we cannot actually uh, reach out to other people. And that compassion we find in the humanities. And I think that is the important thing about art, is that art is teaching us about, um, you know, about how do we become compassionate? How do we incorporate spirituality, religion, humanities into our, into our um, subject group as such, into art education. And then also, on the other hand, as a researcher, how do we encourage that we have a self-belief in our own identity, in our rootedness, 
how do we encourage belonging and our talents and our values? So I think in these uh, roles, we can do it, you know, because it, if you work in transdisciplinary ways and if you work towards uh, incorporating other people in, in the world, in your artistic vision, then you can actually comply to being having a, a belief in yourself but also being compassionate in the world, with the world around you. And if you do have that, that will take you on to, you can mobilize people around you. It will help you to have a vision for what, how do you see the future? Where do you want to go the future? Um, what ethics and values are going to, um, uh, um, are going to steer you, are going to move you into the right direction? And how do you actually, Use the disciplines and your own discipline to develop a leadership, a creative leadership that will put you into action and that will make sure that this love paradigm can be realized. So basically, um, I almost want to conclude that if we don't have compassion with where we are living and the the um, influence we have with people around us. If we don't have a self-belief, I am what I am because of, of you type of thing. Um, if we should have self-belief that will lead to leadership, where we will take responsibility into our own hands to embed our immediate community, but also the community of people around us, okay? Um, and I think in that way, if people are starting to see themselves as part of a bigger network and also as part of somebody that wants to enhance the world and, and improve, uh, be socially responsible, I think it's only in that way that we can actually move forward and keep whatever we do sustainable. Um, right, so... With the last, almost second last uh, slide, um, I can just then, I, I end off basically uh, with a question in art education, and maybe we can open this to the panel. Uh, I'm asking you, how does your love for play look like? In other words, um, what does it consist of? And what type of work are you doing that enhance the flowers that you are holding uh, and that you are giving to others. Um, does it have that spirit of, of, of finding your inner strength and also sharing it with others and then developing into something that will improve the status of art education, not only in schools, but in the country and in the world? So I want to leave you with that because I think um, I have come a long way in moving away from working in silos and working in very linear ways with me being very directed in what how other people should be and what they need to comply to and what they need to do and so on, towards a world of accommodating and listening to the needs and the wants of other people, but also ensuring that they that I instill a type of a leadership in my students so they can go out and recognize what is happening around them and basically sow the seeds of love <laughs> uh, in, in art education as such. Right, so that is basically the end of my story. I'm going to carry on. I will be talking about the conference that we intend to have in December. So. If there's any more questions, you can ask me, really. <laughs> I would like to thank the mayor. I would like you to brief the school art education virtual conference coming up in December. So they have to submit uh, uh, application or abstract and all that. Can you please shed the light on that so that people can People here can be a part of it. Thank you. Yes. Um, okay. I'll, I will carry on. Um, in 2018, we had a, a very important 
actually, uh, yeah, it was uh, the, a very, this was the start of this organization called SASIA. And SASIA stands for Sub Saharan African Society of Arts, of Education through Art. We extended a bit to the arts as well, as we understand that music and, and performing arts and, and also film uh, is part of the industry. But um, we, is, uh, we were established by basically or under the auspices of INSEA, which is the International Society for Educators Through Art. Um, and we uh, established this uh, society to branch out and to get all our art educators on board. <clears throat> and so this is going to be our first conference uh, that we're going to have. Uh, it looks now with this pandemic that it might be uh, virtual. We might have a few people face to face and then following very strict um, rules in terms of how we organize the conference, the parallel sessions and so on. But we urge you please to have a look at this um, website because on it you will find all the different themes and the themes are the themes around um, Embrace, embracing indigenous knowledge uh, in terms of pandemic change for sustainable development. In other words, um, what, how can we use the knowledge that we've got in our countries and in, and in our areas to, to move forward, to use it to our, um, uh, to use it purposefully and to make a difference. And then also, how do we extend it and, and actually um, how do we enhance it and how do we promote it, not only in our areas, but also globally. So therefore, um, I urge you please to have a look at this website and the abstracts that you need to send uh, should be in by the end of September. Um, also, uh, those themes that we cover basically um, uh, you know, it's it's themed around uh, transformation and leadership between the elderly and the youth, uh, inclusivity and wellness, as well as heritage and cultural responsiveness and cultural responsibility, as well as entrepreneurship. So how do we use the indige indigenous knowledge of our countries and our areas to promote those four themes? So um, I've just attended the film industry, the film industry festival, and I was so blown away with what they got and how they're actually promoting uh, the industry because it's also very young. Um, people need to start looking at other ways of involving and engaging the youth, for instance, um, you know, because as I say, in this area, the minds will dry up but then the stories of the people and the art of the people will still remain. So um, that is something that I would like to just bring under your attention. But I would like to see your faces. I would like to see you, if you can't visit South Africa in December, to please come through virtually and, you know, present your, your indigenous, the knowledge that you've got about your area, the difference that you can make in terms of, of, of you know, what can we bring to the table? Uh, um, what can we bring from the African continent to the table? So, um, yeah, if you find uh, any difficulty in entering uh, these abstracts, these, the program has not been released, but we're waiting for, for the abstracts before we will actually put the program together. But it will run from the 1st until the 4th of December. There we are. Thank you very much, Prince. Yeah, if you scroll down, if you scroll down a bit, I think, yeah, uh, there is the call for abstracts. And if I think if you go further down, you'll also see, yeah, the themes are also there. So incidentally, those pictures were drawn by a, a Portuguese woman that was at the first INSEA or SACIA uh, meeting place in Namibia. <clears throat> That's Teresa Alejandro. 
uh, yeah, if you go up a bit, uh, uh, Prince, on that screen. Yeah, the themes are just a little bit down. Yeah, if you go to abstracts and then you'll find the themes. It is under call for abstracts, I think. Yeah, well, these are the themes. Travel. Okay, but uh, all the detail are basically available on this um, web page. It is UNESCO affiliated, so they've endorsed it as well. We're very glad that they see the importance of this. And I'm sure there's going to be a few other organizations that will also uh, appear on our web page. And CR has also endorsed it. So um, we will add that also to our web page. OK. Um, thank you so much, Maya. I have. I have... If you can all see the our chat, I've dropped the link to our chat so that we can all just go to that link and learn more about it. But I believe uh, Mayor will still share more on this particular weeklet um, uh, space. And uh, we have so much, a lot of people have joined. We have about 21, uh, about five members now. But we, I will ask all of us to be a part of this, uh, uh, this uh, space so that we can also learn about other things like the learning to at international uh, projects by INSEA. And this very one that uh, Maya just spoke about, we also be uh, I, I would love uh, Maya to do that for us, to put that content, to join this weekly space and put that content for us so that other people can access it. But the one for INSEA, we can just go there and access it. It's already there. And there are some other uh, videos, other links, and resources for art educators, opportunity for art educators. There are a lot of things there we can look at. The cycle management of uh, the uh, doctor, uh, Adele shared that with us about a week ago. There are a lot of videos there. A lot of other things that we can just see there. So it's just uh, basically about sharing content with other art educators around Africa. So that is what the Google class is. Is, is meant for. So we can go there at our own convenient time and assess these resources. And it will be a great opportunity for that. We can also drop content for us, like Dr. Olude. You can drop the content for art educators there. And Dr. Mayer, to your presentation tonight, too, you can also drop it there for people to, to, to assess and also learn more from it. So it is high time for questions. We can take questions now. We can take questions now. So if you, if you have questions, we can just use the and icon and ask our questions. We can use the and icon to ask the questions. But we can't get to, to the and icon. We can think, I think we can if you have questions to ask now or contributions to make, we can we can use the we can just unmute ourselves and speak. Because some people might not really get how to use the hand icon, but it's right there on our screen. So I will leave it all to us to participate now. Who will be the first person to speak tonight? You can just unmute yourself and speak if you want to speak now, please. I hope you can all hear me. Hello, I believe you can all hear me loud and clear. Yes, sir. OK, the floor is open for us to make, to ask our questions and also make contributions. Uh, maybe I can ask something, Prince. Um, OK. Uh, just uh, in connection with the love paradigm, I, I would like to know and actually get some um, feedback in terms of whether the art educators think it is uh, far-fetched or it is uh, relevant. Uh, what do you think is the opinion? Because, I mean, I want to roll it out a little bit to 
uh, I've already started to roll it out a bit to the international, uh, you know, field as well. So do you think it's a, a good model that we can actually propose to our students or even to learners or so? Is it something that you think they can identify with? I mentioned it to the film industry uh, festival and there were a lot of students and they were quite, you know, they they related to it in a certain way, if I can put it that way. So I would like you to be quite critical of it as well, if you can make some suggestions on, on how we can extend on that. Is it possible to put this slide bath up so that we can see that? Is it possible? Sure, sure, sir. I, I think I can do that. Oh. Ah, uh, okay, it's the previous one. Uh -huh. It's coming up. It might take a while to load, it, but it's, it's coming up. Uh, which specific slide are you referring to? Uh, Just the one with the love paradigm. OK. Yes. I wanted to so see it, while I you know, speak to it. OK. okay. All right, if you go down, I think. It's almost at the end. Almost at the end, okay. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay just one. Okay, let me, I want, to, I want to make it smaller. Okay. Is it this one? The, the one before. Oh, mm -hmm. OK. This? It's, it's not changed yet. Go a bit back. Oh, there, there we go. It's halfway. Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. OK. OK, um, I wanted to make sure that I know the words in my head before speaking to it. I think this is a very good practical way of establishing in students' minds exactly what the, the totality of what they're going to be doing will be, because art is not just a practice on its own. It's not in isolation. I think it's part of life itself. And if we don't have that balance in mind and we just study art or we try to make art, if we have no values and we don't understand how it impacts the environment, environment meaning community, spaces and everything, then it's in my own point of view as a designer, I see it almost as useless, sorry to say, but that's how practical I have to be sometimes. So this really puts it in words that can be explained to people, students, parents, teachers, that yes, we have practice, we have the making of art, we have the research and all that, but this is what it does to life. So I think it's a good concluding statement, so to speak. So that's what I wanted to say, thank you. And you did a wonderful job with your presentation too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yao. We uh, sometimes tend to feel quite isolated, <laughs> also in the south of Africa. So yeah. it, it's it's nice if we know that you know we can take it a bit forward and um, um, put our praxis almost into living and loving. Yes. Thank you.
Thank you. We can still have more comments, questions, contributions. Are we just into a mute our mic and speak? Maybe you'll have to call some names. <laughs> I really do. I really don't want to do that. I just want people to just uh, speak. So that <laughs> okay. Um, probably I have to call names. Really. Um, <laughs> let me look to the list we have here. Um, I think I saw Christiana earlier. Christiana from Namibia. Uh, Christiana is the uh, counselor for uh, Africa in India. Oh, she has left. Okay. Uh, she has left. Okay. Um, can we have Dr. Adenle was here too? Okay. She is no longer here. Um, okay. Um, Doc, um, Alaji Adenle, do you have a comment to make, sir? Alaji Adenle. Alaji Adenle. Oh, my sister Elizabeth Shinana from Namibia. Do you have? <laughs> do you have... Do you oh, let's, hear, let, let's hear your voice again, Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, let's hear your voice again. You are muted. You need to unmute yourself and speak. We are waiting, Elizabeth. We are waiting, Elizabeth. We are waiting, Elizabeth. Great. You are muted now. I think she may have a network problem. Hello, we can't hear you. Probably the mic is bad. Okay, I guess the mic is bad. Uh, mic is bad. Okay, uh, Mr. Oladimeji, can we hear you, sir? While we are waiting for Elizabeth to sort that out, Mr. Oladimeji, I know you are there, so you can unmute yourself and speak. Mr. Ladimeji. Okay, uh, we have another lady like, in the house. Yeah, it might be the network is not very good tonight. Okay, okay. Yeah. Are you okay, like hello. Hello, are you like Okay, you? good evening, everyone. Yeah, evening. I want to appreciate um, Dr. Mia for this um, beautiful presentation. It's not been easy, but I need to appreciate you because an art educator, I know a lot of new, new things, invention and new things upgrading everywhere. So I would like to, you know, the first slide, which say consider what other people want, not always what would be nice. Maybe in times of the monkey, you know, applying to Africa set up here, I won't think that we we've really we've really kind of um, utilized that, or probably that is allowed mostly here. You know, as an art educator, as a teacher, the belief in Africa that you have more knowledge, you know more to do, you know what to take up, and um, what you need to share to the general public. So I think that in that way, consider other people what they want is a nice startup that I, um, art educator needs to do more on that, you know. And I think that will also apply to we probably the professional artists that are not into art educator, probably studio artists, association as well, group and leaders.
I, I think I think we lost Aya too. Okay, uh, Doctor Mayor, you can respond to that. I think we lost. Hello. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think yeah, she's a bit frozen in the moment. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the network. Okay, so what I want to say is just thank you very much. He's, um, I couldn't uh, really catch, uh, you know, what the question would be, but I, I, I suspect uh, it's around the fact that we we uh, we teach, but we are not always considerate teachers, or we are not always thinking what is the the bigger uh, vision or the bigger picture um, where we want to go but maybe she when she comes online she can just elaborate a little bit um, oh, okay. okay I think we can have Ms. Oladimiji now then why we're waiting for her Ms. Oladimiji hello hello we yep. can hear you we can hear you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, oh. Uh, firstly, I want to thank uh, the center of my. She has really done that. And I, I was uh, fascinated by some of the clips that, that she presented for us. Um, in the actual sense of this, I love the trend of this. So on daily basis, we learn new things. Um, from my presentation tonight, uh, although I was having this uh, network uh, uh, problem, you know, some of the things is not the, I, 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 I missed some, and I was not really able to catch up with some areas. But at the same time, the little I've been able to uh, work. Uh, it is a good thing that uh, if only we can emulate a way of presenting things, we go a long way to equally um, help the students to catch up with whatever I want to uh, teach in the class. Um, then talking about uh, the issue of uh, what people want, not the uh, what uh, we should uh, give to them in uh, our I, I think um, that is a uh, part of, that has been the part of, uh, I mean, the way Africans, uh, you know, um, train their indigenous artists before now. Because uh, we are not really particular about uh, the, the art for art's sake of it, or the reality of a, a particular a, a form or animal or anything. But what exactly is is coming to the mind of uh, the artist rendering the work, and then the information the artist want to pass across to his audience is is the major thing in the heart of the artist. I'm talking of, uh, you know, the, the, the artists from Africa. That is the major thing in their hearts. I, I, I so much love the icon you showed us tonight. I mean, those uh, masks and, you know, those uh, African masks that, uh, that, that you presented the other time. That is exactly what the look of African has, you know, I need a kind of uh, uh, information and the kind of uh, the, the, the virtue that the, the artworks of African, you know, are present to the world. It's not something that you can just glance through and then understand exactly what the, what the, the I mean, well, to, to get the direct meaning of, of, of a piece of an artwork in Africa, except because there are a lot of history or stories or uh, impression that the artists want to, you know, pass across to somebody who is looking at it. And by the time the artists will run through 
uh, or, 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 or uh, discuss his artworks, you will discover that there are a lot of things attached to that a piece of artwork. In fact, a, a whole uh, a textbook can be written from, can be extracted from a piece of an artwork, which I believe that um, it is more of logical, it is more of uh, uh, creativity, and it, 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 it equally has a kind of philosophical meaning that um, the person who we eventually get the work at, at the end of the day we, you know, learn a lot for because uh, the art of Africa is not just for art for art. It, it carries messages. It has a lot of information to pass across to people. Well, uh, if not for the fact that I, uh, I was having problem with my network tonight, uh, maybe I will have gotten uh, uh, more uh, things to say about your presentation tonight. But with the little that I've seen, you have really done a nice job. And I want to say a big thank you for coming on board tonight. Give us this uh, name. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to call on also, thank you so much, sir. I would like to call on uh, Pastor Felix Fowler to, to also share his own opinion, comments, or questions tonight. Pastor Felix Fowler. If you can hear me, you need to unmute yourself, sir, and speak. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hello, we can hear you, sir. Go ahead, sir. Good to be with us tonight. Yes, uh, you said maybe I should ask questions or make comments. Well, I, I want to appreciate everyone that has been sharing ideas since the beginning of the meeting and even in previous editions. I have a question. I wouldn't know maybe I'm missing out of um, action or any trend going on. We've discussed a lot about the issue of advocacy, meeting uh, government officials, making moves to um, register our grievance about the way art education is being handled in our country and to seek the way forward. I would just like to know what actions are going on, what are we doing um, about this? What's the latest, what's the update about these um, proposals and all the suggestions that have been made earlier? Thank you. Um, okay. Okay. Are you are you done, sir? Uh, okay. Yes, I'm done. I don't right. want to go into the update. Okay. What? How far have we gone about achieving our goals? Okay. I I'll just talk briefly about that. For now, we have been able to collate responses of our educators, and we have a document for that now, which is also on that particular workplace space and uh, for now we are still we are still working on even collaborating with INSEA that is still in the process so we are still working on how to even get the now for all other art educators have the have their hands on that uh, document but we are also inviting more people to look at that document so that it could be something we can also share in the future with art educators and also help art educators in their way of advocating. You know, first thing first, we, we talk about that, it starts with art educators. Art advocacy starts with art educators, the way we do things in our own environment. In fact, that is why, what, why we are having all other series of uh, art educators outside there to also inspire art educators and also to also motivate them to do more in their, on their own part. So for now, for now, I think it, it will start gradually, but we are yet to have other publication. But that thought, 
we have put that thought in a document which we have also shared and it's also available that way clear uh, part and we are also looking at also collaborating with other organizations in such a way that we can advance this advocacy more but i think we start with all the, uh, the art educators now we are still even bringing more people on board to also be part of this art educator angle too and wow. we can we are also looking forward to how we can also spread out and the fact is just that having that document will also help us to, also to to know the thought of other art educators about the value of art education which we have done so now but the document is available but we are still the subject is still subjected to upgrading we can still upgrade it and make it more more viable for for this advocacy but for now that is still on the hanging and we are also we are also in also in the process of bringing the uh, INSEAD. INSEAD is international society of education education to art we are also working at getting them involved too because we believe that when we have backing, or even the backing of UNESCO, even the uh, conference coming up in South Africa this year too, there are a lot of things that can still come up. I think it's, it is it is all in different stages, and we can also we are also open up to for, uh, contributions, suggestions from other uh, from other uh, art educators and even organization, even from all quarters. But for now. We are what we are doing now is just to get more people engaged, get more people inspired and motivated in this work of art education and how to even advance it. In our own lo local community, we can do more, but we believe that we believe that it should start with all of us, including everybody uh, listening to me tonight. So, and I don't know, probably uh, Mayor has something to say to that. Yeah, I think, you know, we can talk about love and we can talk about um, we can talk about monkeys and we can talk about uh, signs and masks and we can talk about a lot of images and icons and designs. But I think, again, that thing of a vision, where do we go to, where, where do we go to with art? What is our vision for art education? If, if we don't have a vision for art education, then we cannot actually direct the officials we would, we would like the, to see them go. So I saw now with this film industry film workshop, there are three partners. One is the industry itself, like film. In our case, our industry are the artists, the people that's making art. Then we've got education, and then we've got policy makers and uh, um, you know people that's actually we you get money plus you've got the business partners okay and we as art educators must know very well where we fit in and from whom can we get what and to whom can we actually advise so I would say that we should have a a collaborative plan basically with lots of, of uh, points that overlap in terms of those four role players. It's the people in the industry, it's the educators, it is the policy makers, and what is the fourth one? The the business people, the people that needs to put money in, in this, you know, whatever project we want to launch. So I think that is important. What do we want? Because it's okay for policymakers to say, okay, we wanted to do, you know, what are you doing about this and what are you doing about that? But I think it's also important that we tell them what we would like to see, what should happen and what is already there. Look, it's not reinventing the wheel because there are a lot of beautiful ideas out there, but it is a vision of, how do we establish art as an industry or art education as an industry that has value? Uh, and that is the three things that, that we are in South Africa going to employ in our school systems. And maybe we should also start to tweak art education is employability, entrepreneurship and education. 
education is that lifelong thing. You are forever improving and educating uh, as an artist or as a teacher or researcher or whatever. Um, employability. How do you as an artist get, as an art educator, get employable? How do you teach your students or your learners to be employable? What skills do they bring to the table? And then in terms of entrepreneurship, we, we are not in isolation. What will make us in Africa attractive so that people want to invest here? What is it that we can offer that is different, that's a cut above or below or sideways from the others, you know? So how do we package ourselves so that we are proud of ourselves? We find a, a new pride in what we are doing and, and actually promote that. And I think it's there. It's just that it's all these pockets of excellence are all over and we should uh, mobilize it. We should get it together and we should have a, a spiel, a, a smorgasbord of this is what our country, the best qualities about what is happening here and, and how can we actually promote that. And if people see, especially in this time, that tourism and all those other things are actually extending and it's actually uh, blooming, then, um, you know, people want things that they can relate to if there's energy and if there's new original things coming out. So um, I can't answer the question for, for Nigeria specifically, but I think there's a lot of um, points that we agree on and that we should ask our people. Let's look at arts and culture. Let's look at how things link together and what we can bring. Uh, if we don't have a vision for art education and, and spell it out, our vision is that our students that we teach, that our learners that we teach become employable one day. Otherwise, they will forever be struggling artists. How, what do we do to make them employable? Okay. What do we do to make them entrepreneurial, to go out there and seek a better life for themselves? And how do we use art or utilize art not only as a tool for expression but also as a tool for communication and for creativity to get to that point where everybody becomes uplifted and live uh, in, in a world that that uh, makes sure that it's to the uh, positive for the well-being of everybody you know looking after everybody's well-being I don't know if I answer your question, but I think that is just my view. So um, we need to put something on the table. What is the vision that we want for art education? And what are we going to do to get there? <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Pastor Felis, do you still have something to say? To that? Yeah. Um, do you want to make comments? With that? To, uh, okay. Yes, I really appreciate the responses and um, it gave me uh, more confidence, you know, to, to hope for a change that things will happen as we take these things further. So one, one thing I'm doing now is to talk to more art educators and to acquaint them with these uh, proposals and uh, um the about the advocacy so that they too can contribute their quota to to it and make it stronger so i'm doing that right now in fact i'm also trying to invite more people to the hangout i hope they will be joining in subsequent editions thank you okay thank you so much for that submission sir and uh, i just want to i and uh, this goes to everybody in the house tonight I think if you can all bring more people on Arts Educators Hangout and all mind together, because some people don't even know what we are doing, though we try as much as possible to get it to them. But just like, uh, I think we can't stop. We just have to keep going. We just have to keep giving until we, our, our aim and, and objective is achieved. We, I think we all have visions for coming here too, but we can expand on that. And the vision is even getting bigger, the way I see it. 
and we can all benefit from this in the in the uh, in the long run. So I believe that we all have parts to 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 play. This is not really an uh, an association to so, so to say, but it is a it is a platform for us to work mind together, work together, and also collaborate. You know that is the reason why we even make that wakelet space for all of us that we can drop something ideas. Uh, content for other art educators where we can also make use of in, in our day-to-day -day, uh, activities uh, regarding to art education. I, do, I believe that there are more people we say have more to say to this tonight. So the floor is open to us. We can, if you have comments, contributions to make to this, we can unmute our mic and speak. Thank you so much, Pastor Felix, for bringing this up again. Thank you so much, sir. Uh you're welcome, thank you. Can uh, I can, uh, can I ask one of my uh, colleagues in South Africa maybe just to give her view on how she sees uh, education, art education at the moment, if it's growing or her opinion? I don't know if Connie is still available, Connie Pretorius. Okay. I think let me check. I saw I saw the name earlier. You okay, know, he's, he's, there, he's there. Connie, you can unmute yourself, please, and speak. You are muted. You need to unmute yourself and speak. I'm, I'm, uh, I think I'm on now. Can you see me? Yes, yes. You are okay, on, good. on now. If we I, can I'm hear I'm you now. To, good. Yes, I'm listening to all your, your people down there and up there. And um, as an art teacher, I think we must focus on... There's sometimes you will get students or learners in your class who want to be an artist, but you have to focus also on art appreciators. So not everyone can be an artist. I think the main focus is to train and to educate our the, the a bigger spectrum of learners to appreciate art as well. Um, and then I think that will be more positive towards the artist. So not everyone in your classroom can be an artist and will be an artist, but they have to be sensitive and they have to be appreciators of art. I think that's, that's the most important thing for me. Okay. Oh, thank you. Okay, Professor Shergon Lide, you can speak now, sir. Thank you, Connie, uh, thank you. for that submission. Thank you. I, I actually would just uh, latch on to what Connie had said um that you have to be appreciators of art and tied into one of the points that um Mano made earlier because over here i was involved in creating a map of a community forest some years ago it was quite a process it made me realize that you cannot just create art and then show it to the community. The community has to be part of the process. And in the community, there are some who appreciate art. There are some artists who are working in other industry that are very sensitive to what you're going to put in their community. And it's just a broad spectrum. So I've learned since then that the most successful um, community art projects are actually owned by the community and the artist is just maybe 25 percent of the whole process <laughs> and so it's really important to stress that teaching art is not just for raising artists but teaching people to understand to see and to use art in their work as well so that was my comment thank you Uh, Connie, you see, I have your mic uh, mute, uh, muted. Do you still want to contribute? Mm. Okay. You, okay. Okay. You can just, you can just <laughs> mute just, yourself. Then. Yeah, I think I agree. Okay. I think, I think you said it very well, and I think that was maybe my uh, thing that I really like to see to say to you as well. Um, Twenty-five percent of the community will be the artists, and then the the seventy-five percent must be in love of art. They must know how to use art, how to apply art, 
and then the artist will be appreciated as well. So yes, I agree with him. Thank you for very much for that input. Okay, thank you, Connie. Thank you for that. Um, is there anybody else tonight? Yeah. Yes, I'm back. Sorry for the network. Uh, Omo okay. Yes, okay. I was saying something about the monkey, but before I go back there, I just want um, a situation. Let me just illustrate like the phonics teachers in the schools. You don't just get them easily and uh, to get an application into any school. I think they have a association or a body, you know, and if you don't pass through that body or probably you don't just get any phony teacher for application to get into any school. I think until we, the art teacher, art educator, creates that value for ourselves. Sorry, that value, that love, not to deprive or not to run any other artist, no matter how good yes. that artist is, if you don't run each other down, I think we go a long way in Africa setting or in Nigeria. You know, when we have a database right first, artist database as an educator, we set a standard for ourselves. You know, we love ourselves, you know, understand me. Then we appreciate ourselves, no matter kind of art you. Yes, you may be good in times of um, probably yes. portrait. I may be good in uh, crafts. I'm also an artist. So until we, we love ourselves, just as uh, Maya indicated in our slide today. Sorry, yeah. Until that love comes in and we're able to unite, then we can and make a real change, a turning point in Nigeria in general. Because I see arts that uh, because of some gap that we are having in arts aspects, so it's creating a vacuum and it's not bringing us together. Because we don't appreciate, we don't love ourselves. This more knowledge, we need to educate ourselves more we need to keep telling people value what you do embrace what you have you understand believe in yourself wherever you create believe is the best and uh, you have to raise your head high keep telling people don't feel inferior a lot of artists you know probably let me use the word don't know how to present themselves especially in public when they ask you, you are an artist, can you draw me? You have to tell them it doesn't matter that because every artist has to draw you now, rightly. There's a way you have to, you know, you have to give this back to them that you have to value artists. You can't just see a lawyer. Can you, can you do this? You know, you don't approach a lawyer that way. But because they feel that, that some of us are not good, these ones are roadside, this one are these, this one didn't go to university, this one went to polytechnic. So we have to let that behind us. As long as you find yourself in this in this um, profession, profession, let's embrace ourselves. Let's that love flow. Let's get a standard for ourselves. Let's have a database for art educators, and we can move forward. Thank you, May. I appreciate your, you know, your slide all the time. How I'm going to use that because I take um, the expatriate children craft and arts, you know. So when when you open the platform and you give the children or someone a helping hand, that what's your view about this? What do you what's your take up on this? How do you want us to do? You see that they have a lot of beautiful ideas that you have not even exploited. So I think that's what we should create within ourselves as an artist. Let's open our hands to others. I want to embark on this event. moral project. I want to do this project. I want to have this solo exhibition. What do you think? Talk to someone. You see the beautiful idea. Yes, we have online um, exhibition going on. I don't know how to do it. Why don't you ask somebody? How can I do it? Run my solo exhibition. If you can't do a physical one, Yes, now is the opportunity for us, for you to go out there, get in search, go to the site and um, ask someone, I cannot do an exhibition, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Yes, let's open up. Let's embrace ourselves. 
don't look down anyone. She said that love still counts. As an artist, as an art educator, we should love ourselves and value ourselves more. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ayala, for for the contribution. I don't know if anybody. Okay, you can go ahead, sir, Professor Shegunlude. I can see your hands on up, sir. That was that was an error. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, I, I don't know if you still have one or two uh, comments to make tonight or contribution. But what I would just like to say, I guess what uh, uh, Mrs. Omofo was trying to say is just like the way we, we treat ourselves as art educators really matters. So we don't look down on anybody because I believe that some people believe that uh, if you can't draw very well, you are, you are limited as an art educator or you are, there is a, I think you are not you are not uh, good enough. They have this uh, idea that you are not good enough. You cannot do very well. And art is not about just uh, how good you are in in making good, certain drawing. In fact, there are some arts that, that doesn't has to do with drawing because people believe that because okay something happened in my school. Sorry, I just want to bring this up. Something happened in my school and somebody said. I was asking me that, can you draw as so, 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 and so person? My, my response to that person is like, is it about how good I am in drawing like so, so, so person that will make me a better art educator? I just ask that person because you don't have to, you don't have to uh, compare. When you, when you are comparing yourself with some, some certain people, with some people, it, 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 it limits you as a person. You don't have to compare yourself like, okay, because I can't do that. You have to look at your area of strength. Last year, I got the President Teacher Award. You can imagine that is one of the uh, notable uh, uh, award in Nigeria, President Excellent Award. I've got certain other awards. But somebody, there I am, somebody asking me if I can draw as social as so person. But the thing is just like, I don't know the motive for that person, why that question was asked. I think sometimes some people just find a way of, of getting back at you that even when they are saying that you have you are an excellent art educator, are you sure you are good enough? So it's, it's, it's boiled down to the way we see ourselves. And just like you don't let allow the society to bring us down. We just have to, just like, I just want to protest on what uh, Mrs. Ayola said. You don't have to look on, down on yourself because you can't do certain things. You just have to look at your own area of strength and continue to march on, uh, on to achieve excellence. It is about how you how you organize your class classroom that matters. And just like Conning and Professor Lude have said earlier, not all are, uh, not all students in your class that we merge as artists. About 25 percent, 25% of them might emerge as professional artists. Are almost like 75 percent. What happened to the 75 percent? They must be art lovers. You must make them appreciate art. So it goes down than what you can do personally. But what you can do personally too matters as an art educator. You have to show them. You have to lead by example. You have to. If you are not so good at a particular area of art, you can also learn. So we can't just fold our hands too. I'm also talking another perspective now. We can't fold our hands and oh, I can't do this. You can always learn. We are, in fact, I have brought a lot of other people in my classroom and I realized that even in that process, I have also learned to as an art educator. So we should just open ourselves to opportunities and continue to learn and relearn as an art educator. So that is what I just want to say to contribute to what Ayola have said. I don't know if Maya has something to say about that too. Thank you very much. Um, I see that's about my family members also joined in <laughs> from Norway. <laughs> okay. So I just want you to welcome my brother there in Norway. Um, wow, and maybe, welcome. Yeah, and maybe also has an opinion about how the condition of art in Norway because uh, I've visited the Munch Museum and I mean, just going there, uh, you know, a lot of artists and it's just a repetition of history, 
is not really they are not really appreciated in the time that they uh, are living. You know, so they uh, a lot of times they become popular or famous or whatever after their death. So it, it's not a, a unusual phenomenon, but it to me it's frustrating because that uh, dialogue and that conversation never stops, and it, it's um, I think it's also in a in a certain way monetary. You know, how do we market ourselves? How do we become um, very original but still part of the mainstream? So it, it's important that we change that whole idea of the stereotypical idea of the artist that's struggling and the artist that's this and artists that can't express themselves or they are not understood or anything like that. I think we need to start uh, thinking of ourselves as part of the mainstream, except that we've got something else to offer. We are not maybe financial gurus, but there is something that we do that people would like to invest in or that people would like to buy. And maybe I'm, I'm sounding now a little bit um, uh, too economic, but I, I think that is in the beginning of my presentation, I said something about the status of art. And like Connie also said, we need to teach, have a generation of people that really appreciate art and uh, the experience of having art. There's a lot of people that, that invest in art and so on, but I think art must be utilized in more than one way. And that's also one of the things that I try to to put in my in my presentation is that art is it's not just high art, but it's also art as a tool for communication, for creativity, for um, building social responsibility, for engaging. Uh, it, it, it's a tool for because it happens in the third space, you know, and therefore it's, it can be less personal. So if people are working a project together and they've got the same vision, and it is in another, Engelstrom uh, talks about the third space, and it's less direct and it's less personal. So one can use art and its variations in a lot of different ways to get to a point where people feel that they are self-realized. I mean, I am happy. I, I love teaching art, and I love um, inspiring my students. Yes, I can do a lot more, but we must find ourselves in a position where we are happy. Maybe we do not create enough. Maybe we do not paint enough. All of those things, but there's always that uh, dissonance that we are dealing with in our lives. But I think in the end, um, we must create a world where, that people gravitate towards. Art is like a gel, you know. I mean, why did they bring art in STEM? That whole thing of science, technology, engineering, and maths. Because art is, in a way, connecting a lot of things. And people must just realize that. It is not the most important thing, maybe, to people that are, um, you know, in finances or that are in mathematics or sciences or whatever. But it is a matter of, how do we uh, invest and use our creativity? Um, you know, so there's different ways of actually expressing that. And like I said, we must move to the same vision. How do we uplift the status of art education so that we don't mull around the same type of arguments, uh, you know, during all the different generations and not actually getting somewhere where there is recognition for that. Um, oh, and that is basically oh. my conclusion. Or not conclusion, it's an open, it will be an open discussion and dialogue forever. But I mean, you know, uh, this Elon Musk, you know, he's from South Africa, is now regarded with his creativity and his foresightness and seeing things totally different as is now a richer guy than the guy that invented Facebook in, in, that, in terms of that, you know. So I'm not talking in terms of, of uh, you know, 
what did he do with his creativity? He, he actually expanded it, he explored it, he took it to the next level. And I think we need to focus on that also. How do we use our creativity to get ahead, to have vision for, for uh, progress, for going forward and, and making people invest in our capabilities? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Maya. We have really, really spent time, and this is about 14 minutes to 10, and we are drawing to a close now, but we take uh, Professor Shea Gonlude. Thank you. Go ahead, um, just the discussion reminds me that we are up against a challenge as artists, and that's one of the reasons why we're looking for the value of art in an expressible way, whether we express it in words or in visuals, we still have to be able to make an argument for art. In Canada here, one of the challenges that artists face um, is that the government actually puts money into art. So when the government, let's take a city government, for instance, they're saying, oh, we need two fire stations. They know how much a fire station is going to cost. They would ask you know, questions about how to build it and how much the engine is going to cost. They have a number. When they need a school, they get a number. But when it gets to art or public space, they really have to work hard to explain to the community why they're spending their taxpayer money on art. So right. it's a really big challenge. That's the number one challenge. And then for the money being spent to make sense. There's what we call grants. Okay, so they're going to give you an artist a grant that includes how much you're going to live on. They're not going to give you money to make you a millionaire. They'll say for the period you're making this art or that you're teaching this art or that you're experimenting with this art for 14 months, we'll give you so much every month so that you don't die. So then they give you money for what the outcome is going to be. So for 14 months, we want you to go to 16 schools to teach them how to drum or draw or whatever. They will pay you for it. But it has to make sense to the community because the community owns the money. So in Nigeria, I'm not sure the system is that established that you can say no, no, oh, yeah, that, I'm no, still laughing because this is that, really <laughs> so we really have to carve out to that value statement and make sure we have it like easy for an accountant or an engineer to understand the engineer needs to understand the aesthetic value of art and he also needs to understand the monetary value of art the accountant who's going to report to the boss and say, hey, we're spending so much on art. You know, it's just a mindset change that we, re we really are up against a lot and we need to strap up. That was going to be my, my final comment. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I think we, should, we, have, we have had enough tonight. Uh, I think we should we should be saying good night tonight. But there is somebody from the mayor mentioned. I can see we not at Pretorius. I don't know if I get that right. I know. So I don't know. I don't know if that person would like to make comment before we say good night. Okay. I don't have any comments. I'm just listening. Thank you. It's it, it, very oh. interesting. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much sir, for joining us tonight. Um, I think uh, with this, we will have to say um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I can see some people in the house that are here to make comments, either to uh, also make contribution. That uh, I can see Olufemi Ogunshe here. I don't know if you want to make one or two, uh, one minute comment, sir. Okay, you can go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, good day, everyone. So sorry, I joined a little bit late. So that was the reason I kept quiet. But all the same, all that has been said has been very interesting and challenging, particularly in the area where we have to make art relevant so that we will not be questioned uh, of what we are doing. I also like the 
uh, respond you said you gave to the person who asked you if you could draw like that other person that is always uh, the situation we find ourselves people will always want to compare us forgetting that art has several branches and then each individual has their strength as well so uh, we just need to know how to package ourselves and also present ourselves or else they would look down on us and uh, so far the situation we are having in should I say Africa in general, it's uh, a situation of neglect. Art has been neglected and relegated, and as a result, they will just call on anybody who believes that he can teach us to come and take the subject. Uh, I'm using Nigeria as an example. Uh, a lot of schools will complain that they can't, particularly the junior section, because uh, we now have what we call cultural and creative art, whereby art, music, and uh, drama are matched together. So they will complain that they can't employ two or three teachers to teach one subject. So they will rather do it in a wiki, washy way. And unfortunately, government is not helping matters. But we artists are trying in our own little way just to ensure that we do be needful. So I will not want to waste our time or say too much because we have a, a hydra-headed pro, uh, problem here in Nigeria, but we are battling it one after the other. So thank you very much. It has been nice listening to uh, hanging out with uh, artists here and uh, every contribution has been uh, 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 that has been made, I've been taking and I've been implementing them. We have a room in my school here. I uh, could remember we said during one of the artist hangouts that we should also expatiate and hammer on the importance of art in the society. So that is one of the sub uh, topics which I treated with my year seven students. I made them realize that art is everywhere and no matter what discipline they are planning to take, they should equally embrace art and take it as serious as possible. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thank you so, so, so much, sir. Thank yeah, you thank so you, much, sir. Sir, me, uh, Mr. Luvemi, for that contribution. Thank you, thank left, you, uh, tonight. Um, I don't know if we are here to make comments. You can um, you can move your mic now. We have about six minutes to go. I, I, we have really take uh, Mayor's time tonight. Mayor, I want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. I've, I've really been blessed. For every night we have, we have been there to hang out, where I have personally have been, been inspired, motivated, and also I learned so much tonight. That is a wonderful uh, presentation. I don't know if I would like to take your permission. If you want me to share that your presentations to other people can have access to it, would that be okay? Okay, Maya. Maya, would that be okay to share um, that with other people on that platform? The yes, PDF. Uh, yeah, I think I think the PDF is is fine. I'm not sure uh, with that breakout when my internet uh, played up a bit. I don't know if you want to share the recorded one, but. Um, yeah, you know, you can just see the quality. If, if it can be edited a bit, then I, I would appreciate that. But you're welcome to share it. Oh, and of course... Okay, okay, I would, okay. I, I, I think I'll... Yeah, and of course, also okay. that website, so that we can see all the people there at, at our conference, you know, whether it's in poster or in uh, a presentation format and so on. So I would really like to see everybody that's present here tonight and also with the other hangouts to to actually tune into the the conference it's for for art educators so it's not just okay. for higher education uh you know academics and so on it's for art educators okay i have shared that link with in in the chat tonight 
we can click on that link on that link and also learn more about the conference the, the conference is uh has been uh endorsed by insia and i would, would like all all of us to be a part of it it's going to be interesting like maya have said so we on this note i would like to say uh thank you so much everyone that have been part of this hangout tonight and we can do this again next week same time eight o'clock time nine nine o'clock south african time seven o'clock uh Ghanaian time pm that is uh sunday night so we owe this every sunday night and you can be so next week it's going we are going to have two presenters one from usa and we are going to have ali again ali and also uh, uh someone from nigeria a doctor also from nigeria next week it's going to be interesting please invite others to be a part of this let us uh, build this network and uh, also advance the learning field of art education in on the continent of Africa. So thank you so much for everyone that have been a part of this and everyone that have contributed to the to this anger because we started around May and here we are in September. We are still moving on. Thank you so much and God bless you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Take care. Thank you. Thanks for organizing, friends. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.